Absolutely. So I'll go ahead and get started, but maybe before we do, let's um, let's go around one more time and just introduce ourselves. Um, and I'll start. Uh, I'm Maggie. I um, Maggie Fife. I don't. I have my my work name is on my Zoom, so that's why that's a little bit confusing. And um, I'm the Vestry liaison for outreach along with Rob. And so basically, my job is to. Um, take proposals from the outreach committee um, and make sure that the vestry knows about them and then can vote uh, for funding them or offering other resources and just basically to um, do that administrative role um, for for the committee and maybe maybe rob you want to follow up and since you're also kind of in that role yeah, kind of also in that role, but um, Maggie, you do a great job of explaining it. And um, I hope everyone has a copy of the um, outreach ministry sheet that we were handing out this weekend. But um, anyway, that's that's where we are. I'm Rob Zucker. And I'm going to share my screen and show you all that handout just okay. in case Good you didn't have a chance to have it. I think you can also link to it from the parish news. And I could right. maybe somebody could find that link and we could drop it in the chat. Let me look for that. Okay. Well, maybe while you're looking for that, um, <laughs> can meet the other folks who have joined us. And Dave, you can be at the end. That, oh, that's fine. Absolutely. Yeah. Carolyn, you want to say hi? Hi, I'm just coming to you from a building and grounds committee meeting, which they cut short so I could be here too. So hooray for them. And um, I'm excited to be a part of this group and to be working with David with outreach and Maggie with you and Rob as well. And um, Carolyn, can I call on you later to say a few words about Great Leaps? That'd be fine. Awesome. Okay. And Vanessa? All right, hi, I'm Vanessa. Uh, I was explaining this to Maggie and David before, but I am new to CGS, new to Raleigh, new to a lot of things right now. So just looking to get more involved, learn some more things, meet more people. So that's why I am here tonight. And I wasn't able to come on Sunday, so wanted to make sure I got to this. Perfect. We're so excited to have you. It's great to, I, it makes me feel like the pandemic is, you know, people are moving, people are doing things. It's, it's yeah. very exciting. Oh, and there goes the link into the chat. Thank you, David. Um, Judy? Um, I'm also new to St. Mark's, uh, St. Mark's, St. to Good Shepherd from St. Mark's pre-pandemic. And then I've been in a lot of programs over Zoom. So I'm just trying to find where I fit in doing things. Good. So glad to have you. And David, you're you're kind of the, the star of the outreach show here. So it makes sure. sense that we end with you. Well, I mean, I'm I'm involved, um, have lots of partners. Uh, you know, Carolyn, yourself, and, and Robert are some of those. Um, so I'm David Stroud, and we have what is called a core outreach team. There's around eight of us, um, I believe, in that in that number, uh, not counting the vestry liaison. But, uh, representatives that took um, a direction from our associate rector, uh, Joyce Cunningham, to think about outreach and what it means to Good Shepherd and how we can um, organize it in a way that makes sense um, to what we do as, as, as a church in different areas. So whether it be, um, you know, alt altruism or whether it be alliances, um, those are sort of the ways we look at, um, at outreach. And we sort of have sort of a two-prong approach because we do have some in-reach activities and outreach and we combine them all together. So in other words, um, we, we looked at it from everything that we're doing and what we want to do in the future. Two things I'll mention. One, Carolyn uh, Manley is, is heading up and that's a li literacy program to help people read better um, and that's called Great Leap. So she's going to talk about that. Second uh, big effort is called One Wake. So in other words, all of Wake County. Um, I think I put it into our outreach um, notice that it's really a collection of people brought together to solve 
uh, problems for the common good. In other words, whether it be affordable housing, making sure everybody can vote, making sure that we're looking out for each other. And there's big mission items uh, from One Wake that we can be a part of, and put our two cents in with everybody else who's fighting for the same cause. So it does collectively uh, bring about a better approach to what we can do to solve problems in Raleigh, Wake County. So One Wake is very important. Uh, and then I think the Great Leaps program is also. Um, and you can see how the, 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 the pillars of outreach are organized, whether it be advocating, which is that one wake, or potentially in the future, holding uh, citizenship classes at Good Shepherd. And then the things that we do that really, um, can you go up to the top just a little bit, Maggie, on, on your, and go up to the, just the midsection um, right about there, yeah. So we did come up with a core, I want to, didn't want to pass that up. We did come up with a core vision statement that um, we first initiated and then a, another smaller group went by and looked at that and streamlined it into these three pillars. So in other words, advocacy means we're advocating for other people. Um, altruism means we're helping those in need. And alliances means we're supporting organizations, organizations who share our values. And, and that particular vision statement um, really came out of an effort to make sure that we had our outreach organized into various um, pillars. So those, those three pillars, I think, really mean what we're, what we're doing in each of those. So I just want to mention that. Um, if you go to back down, that just gives you an idea and a flavor of all the things we really do at Good Shepherd. Um, and this is not just donating money. This is hands-on work in many of these things, which I think is even more valuable than sometimes in donating money, whether it be um, what um, Rob Zucker does, and he heads up uh, Warmth for Wake, which means helping to go cut wood for those people who need uh, firewood to help them through the winter months, um, or whether it be um, uh, Family Promise, which we're teaming with um, uh, First Presbyterian right across the street from us downtown and getting meals to various people in need. Um, obviously, we do meals on wheels. Um, we have a huge soup kitchen in our church that's been in existence since the 80s. Um, and it feeds around 300 people each day, Monday through Friday. So um, there's just a lot of things that we do. And, and then Habitat for Humanity. Um, uh, Don Blankenship typically uh, heads that up, and we do it in combination with other Episcopal dioceses and churches and organizations throughout uh, Raleigh uh, as well. Um, we've got a couple of things that are happening from an alliance standpoint. Um, we just recently um, are home to the Raleigh Boy Choir, and they will be on some Sundays singing uh, uh, with our choir. Um, and then we also host and we have space upstairs in our parish life or our parish life center upstairs um, for the Mennonite church. So that's just to give you a little flavor of some things that we do. Um, we do blood drives. Well, pre-COVID, we were doing blood drives twice a year. Um, and you know, obviously we have a farm workers ministry, which we have what we call coming up soon, the St. Nicholas tree, which our farm workers in sort of eastern North Carolina. Um, that do a lot of hard labor, and then we help to buy their family Christmas presents every year. So that's another way that we actually sort of work um, and provide. Uh, we have what's called a Lowe's food pickup. The Lowe's grocery stores provide uh, food to the uh, Shepherd's Table Soup Kitchen, and people can volunteer on a Sunday morning to go pick up food and bring it to the soup kitchen for the Monday morning um, preparation of food for that week. So um, there's just a lot of things, whether it's driving somebody somewhere, uh, getting food, bringing it to the soup kitchen, uh, volunteering at the soup kitchen. There's just lots of things we're doing um, that are hands-on uh, for involvement, not just donating money. So Maggie, I'll just stop there and let you or Rob or any Carolyn maybe, or anybody else who has any questions or comments, but what we, what we do, and, and um, there's more things that we want to do, obviously, 
Um, it's a big list, but I think we want to we want to increase outreach as well into other areas as we go on. So if we do, for example, from one wake that went to the vestry for approval, great leaps that Carolyn will talk about also went to the vestry for approval. Um, so those kinds of things, we'll make sure we get the backing of the leadership of the church um, to, before we undertake additional outreach activities. But the, the, I guess, goal here is, is that the core outreach team is looking for people that might be what we call pillar champions. And those pillar champions, you can, you and someone else or yourself or anybody else that you can think of, we're looking for people that would head up those pillars and make sure that the individual ministries underneath those are actually operating as they do for their mission. And then maybe on an annual basis, provide a simple couple paragraph report on what your successes were or what your needs are for each of those ministries so that we know as a core outreach team what to bring to the vestry for um, the next year's initiatives from either a budgeting standpoint or a mission standpoint or making sure that we, um, you know, if something is not working, how we can change that to make it work better. So that's what we're trying to do from an outreach perspective. So uh, now I'm going to stop talking. Uh, that's awesome, uh, David. And I just can't say enough about how much work the committee has done to really have a vision and an organization and a structure. And those, I mean, we will be happy to have folks participate in any of these programs, but if mm -hmm. anybody does have the calling to uh, be a little bit administrative and, and have that function of kind of communicating with your vestry um, vestry representatives on the goings on of say all the things under altruism or all the things under alliances. That is something that that we're looking for in terms of um, a volunteer role. And again, it wouldn't have to be a singular person, especially if you're new to CGS, that might seem like a big thing, but we could pair you with somebody who's been here for a while. And then you get to know a lot of the outreach ministries that way. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Carolyn in just a second. But the one thing that I did just want to underscore is the fact that we're really trying to grow our outreach. Uh, we do have a couple of things in the hopper that I can't talk about yet, but I'm hoping I'm gonna have some more news. Uh, David and some other members of the church have been working hard on some exciting uh, initiatives for us to have in the new year. And um, I also did just wanna underscore um, that we really are trying to find opportunities that let us do for and do with, right? Not just always kind of seeing ourselves, you know, you know, in a way that we're giving to people, we want to see ourselves working with people. And that's one wake, you know, is the biggest thing under advocacy. And it looks like just one thing, but it's such a huge undertaking. I mean, when one wake has its meetings, we have folks representing mobile home parks, representing all different um, denominations around Raleigh, people from all walks of life, and we're gathering with them to advocate for nonpartisan um, common goals uh, around education, around affordable housing, and around job creation. So that's a really exciting initiative. It's also one that's like fairly easy to be involved in because it mostly inv involves showing up on a Zoom meeting. So uh, I'll just share that as one um, thing that has worked pretty well over COVID, whereas some of the other things have been a little bit trickier for folks to feel comfortable about doing. Um, as far as Shepherd's Table, uh, the Mennonite Church and, um, and uh, uh, the Raleigh Boy Choir, part of, part of what we do there is, is really providing, um, in addition to providing volunteers, say for the soup kitchen, we're also providing um, affordable space downtown for these folks to use. And so that's a sort of um, uh, function that we don't always see, right, in terms of, of that being a benevolent uh, thing that the church undertakes. But that is part of our, our mission is to help these places stay in an accessible downtown area and enrich the downtown community. Uh, so with that, I'm going to uh, hand it over to Carolyn if you're ready to tell us a little bit about Great Leaps, which is our newest initiative and is very exciting. And then maybe we can, Rob, you can chime in if you have anything to add, and then maybe we can have questions. Thank you, Maggie. And David, thank you. Uh, you've been instrumental in getting us to this point. It was this time last year in working with the core team and working with David, and um, I had started 
uh, just tutoring, reconnecting with Great Leaps. I worked with them for over 20 years and started tutoring some students. And then I'm like, someone said something in a meeting about, well, we won't be able to tutor till COVID is over. And I'm like, ding, I'm tutoring virtually. We can do this. And um, I think I worked with six different students last year and they made like two, three years of reading growth in four to five months. So the program's designed for um, volunteers to deliver. It doesn't have to be anyone with any particular type of degree. So I said, boy, this sounds like it might be a good possibility for our church, for a ministry. And then uh, last November, the school system put out news that students, the students who were behind, the percentage had grown from 15% to 20 to 25%. And we already had students falling through the cracks. And I had worked in the school system and had reviewed data year after year after year. So I knew that was the case. And so we started brainstorming. I connected up with a couple of folks. Dave, we sent a proposal to the vestry. The vestry said, we'll fund 10 licenses for this and we should be able to move more than 10 students through those licenses if we get a good match. So that's part of our plan. And um, anyway, so we're looking forward to getting that started. Tomorrow evening, we have a Zoom session for anyone who's interested in tutoring so they can hear more about the program, how it works, what the requirement would be so they can decide, hmm, that sounds interesting. I wanna try training um, or mm, that's not gonna work with my schedule this year. So anyway, we're just gonna be seeing what we can do to get that worked out and get it off the ground. And you know, I, I was ready to do it last year but I'm on God's timetable. He's running the show. Thank you guys for the opportunity. Carolyn, I have one quick question on that, just out of curiosity, because yes. I, I can tend for a little bit tomorrow night, but I only like 30 minutes tomorrow. So my question is, um, these are these daytime opportunities for tutoring, or are they evening as well? Do you know what? I won't really know the answer until we align with okay. a school. Sure. And if the school has a student that they can pull from something, but not academics, of course, but mm -hmm. if they've got a student sure. who can meet in the library 15 minutes before school or 15 minutes during lunch or something like that, then yep. there is a possibility. So I don't truly know. We're okay. kind of moving forward with the idea that most tutoring programs take place after school. Right, right. And we're looking to target a middle school. Okay. So with 10 licenses, 15 minutes for a kid, we're only looking at two and a half hours a day, yeah. making a difference in, in those kids' lives. So sure. um, there's a lot yet to discover, but I'm not ruling out anything. Yeah, good. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Carolyn, I have one quick question. If folks want to join that meeting, where do they find the Zoom link? Or could we? It's in today's newsletter. It's in the newsletter. Awesome. I haven't and I think it's in last that. week's newsletter. Everyone has just been gracious and about getting the information out and that kind of thing. We've got a quick PowerPoint we'll go through. A lot of tomorrow will be question and answer so that the people who want, who are trying to sort out, is this for them, will get answers to their questions. Okay. Yes, that sounds wonderful. All right. Thank you. I'm very excited about it. And I will be there for part of the meeting as well. I may have to be on my phone because I have to take my child to swim practice, but <laughs> I will be there. Um, Rob, you wanna you wanna chime in with any additional info about warmth for wake or any other things going on? I've I've been on the vestry a little bit a little while and I'm actually about to roll off. And so uh, Rob is more new. Is this your first year, Rob? He's muted. You're muted, Rob. Oh, I'm you muted. need to unmute. Sorry. Uh, technology of today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> second year. Of course, last year was a little 
different, but don't you feel what well, this is your first year working on outreach. This yeah, it's it, been a little bit, as you might imagine, like keeping the vestry and church community together has been tough over the pandemic, but we've done pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh this year or well this year, next year when we do warmth awake again, that will be in uh, January, January 22nd. It's a Saturday. And um it's usually everybody seems to have a good time getting out and exercising and it's cool, you know, it's cool weather and uh, we try to get as many of the students that can be in there as possible, you know, with EYC and the schools that are the students that have to have community service. That's another way that they can collect credits for doing that. So it's uh, it's been good. I've done that for a number of years. I started back when my children were uh, in the uh, Indian um, guides at uh, the YMCA. And then once, once we got through that, I just tried to bring it over to the church. So that's where we are. So I think that's, that's a neat program too, because you're essentially getting donations of wood from tree companies who would otherwise, who knows what would be happening with that material. So it's yeah. kind of almost recycling-ish as well, yeah. which I appreciate. City of Raleigh, yeah, the city of Raleigh has the stations and then Everett's, we, one of the locations is in North Raleigh and this Everett's tree company and they they would just supply a large amount of wood they're very generous with their property and the, the wood that they uh let us use so mm -hmm. so wow. that's a little bit of an overview rob sorry did i didn't talk over you did i no no we're good uh do you all have any questions um queries comments anything at all Anything you're particular interested in that you would love to hear if it's at CGS, even though, um, I mean, we have a whole separate pastoral care ministry that might have, you know, if you're not seeing that here, you know, we can certainly talk a little bit about some of the other things that are maybe more, more in reach, um, even though we still do also have some in reach, they overlap a little bit. I guess just what's like the best way to know when things are happening? Is it just like constantly put in the newsletter if stuff's happening? Is there like a separate email? Just how do I know when certain opportunities are coming up? Well, the, the newsletter is certainly one. And then each Sunday at services, usually uh, Imogen will, went during announcement, she kind of fills in everyone on kind of the current events. But I think, um, Vanessa, what I would say is, um, you know, I found over a long period of time that, um, you know, if we need to get something done, we just go ask people to help. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I like that, that you and Judy are here interested and willing to, you know, partake of what's going on. Um, so, you know, we don't often find people coming to us for, um, you know, what can we do? It's more like we usually go to the people and say, can you help us do this? So to answer your question, like Robin and Maggie probably have is yes, that's one way. But I think, um, you know, anytime you see a vestry member or anyone um, that is clergy or staff um, that you might see after a service, whether it's, a, you know, Devin, who's the uh, youth minister, whether it's mm -hmm. Wayne, who's the choir, uh, director or whether it's one of the clergy um andrew being another example of a, a, a you know wonderful clergy person so yes. ask those folks what's going on but I, I tell you what we um usually some of these things are um seasonal mm -hmm. um like like what uh rob just said warmth awake is usually in january um our blood drives typically it, it, it coincides with you know, a summer month usually, and then maybe sometime in the fall. Um, so those are the kinds of things that are sort of on a, on a, you know, annual basis, so to speak. But there's other things that happen that are more regular, um, you know, in terms of, of assistance. Like if you would like to volunteer at the soup kitchen, you know, um, one day a week, um, it's usually 11 to, to 1230 or 1030 to 1230, if you can do that. Um, you know, or, or once a month, 
um, that's a great opportunity. Um, and to meet people, I think, um, you know, some of the, even some of the Bible study classes and um, formation classes that are now starting back up would be a great way. Um, there used to be um, sort of a, and Maggie, you can help me with this because I can't not remember, uh, sort of a young coffee club. What I'm not sure exactly what they called it, but Yes, we're that? always trying to come up with a new name for it because we were all really, uh, the name is a little outdated, but we always yeah. called it the Breakfast Club. Breakfast and Club, it, there you go. Um, and it, uh, you know, is a variety of folks. It's, I think we all started when we were in our like 20s and 30s and now we've gotten older. So, so we're not sure if we need a new group, but that is a fun group that usually meets during, has historically met during the fellowship hour, is not meeting right now. Um, and, and that's a good way to plug in. I'd also say, um, and David, I'm sure you'd agree that if you all would like to be on the list for just knowing when outreach meetings are happening, like, even if you're not on the core mm -hmm. team, you could pop in and just listen Absolutely. and hear what's going on. And that might also be another more centralized way. I think we have been trying to get a calendar going, but we've had a couple of rollovers and staffing challenges, especially with the pandemic, um, in terms of getting like a Google calendar with all of our yearly events going. I'm hoping that that is gonna be something that's gonna happen in 2022. Um, so it is a little bit decentralized at the moment, but, um, but if you get kind of on people's radar, you might also just get asked which <laughs> you know how that is but yeah i think the google calendar um i think anna was working somehow on that if i'm not mistaken anna howard another vestry member um so that would be you know one way um you know if i i, I hate to say this but the website does have some information but it's not not always updated um as regularly as i think it should be so that's probably not the best place to go, but the newsletter that comes out on Wednesday and getting signed up for that, to me, that that is a way, Vanessa, that you can uh, be more engaged and find out more information um, about the current events and what's upcoming in the next you know, week, two weeks, three weeks, or whatever um, is, is happening at that time. So there's a variety of ways, or um, my name is the bottom of the um, outreach information. So my email's there too. Uh, any questions, just give me a jingle or give me an email and say, hey, David, um, how can I get involved? What can I do? And or I, you know, if and when I, once I get contact with you, then I can let you know when our next meetings are going to be. If you'd like to pop, in, pop into one of our Zoom meetings, and I hope eventually we'll be able to meet, you know, face to face, God willing, um, at some point. But yes, that's how I think, um, you know, that you could you can get involved uh, for a variety of ways and, and those are just some of them. So. Hello, Mother Joyce. Hi, everyone. Hey. Sorry, I'm so late. It's been a long day. <laughs> <laughs> You're a busy, right. busy clergy person. <laughs> um, so we have Vanessa and Judy who are brand new to CGS and we're so excited to have them here at Outreach. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, and I will say, in addition to really spearheading our um, expansion of our outreach over the past few years and, and our involvement in One Wake and all those things is Mother Joyce. And um, she has a long history of working with One Wake and its parent organization, the Industrial Areas Foundation. Areas Foundation. Thank you. I was blanking on the A. Um, so she's a wonderful resource too to learn more about um, advocacy with One Week. As is Grace Bull and Sved, who, um, if you're interested, I can put you in touch with. She's our um, team leader for for One Week at CGS and has done a really great job there. Mother Joyce, I don't know if you wanted to say anything about your vision for outreach, current state of outreach at CGS. Um, We've kind of gone over what's going on, um, how to get involved, and um, you know the pillars of our outreach. Mm -hmm. I, I I just want to say how you know th this team uh, has been you know probably reimagined. It's been less than a year that that um, we kind of re reformed 
in the midst of a pandemic. And I'm just really proud of, you know, the team has worked really hard on developing a vision um, and the vision statement is available and developing the, the focus areas and, um, and, uh, and doing this in the midst of a pandemic. And so I, I'm just really proud of the work that they've done and, um, you know, they, they have my full support. And, uh, you know, I, I believe that you, you show who we are as Christians by what we do outside our doors. And so, you know, that is my belief. And so that's why outreach is so important to me because I believe it's how we live our faith. Very good. Any, and I will any say, questions, Vanessa, how, how long have you been? I know Judy. Um, I think I met you a couple I, of weeks ago. I think I, I have too. You look very familiar. I can't, you know, with masks and everything, yes. I can't tell, but. I don't uh, normally I wear glasses. So that throws a lot of people off. I just wear them for the computer. So when people oh, okay. meet me in person, they get very confused. I think I spoke to you like a few weeks ago after. After, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, you, you look familiar, but I, I, I was, I'm trying to place the name with the face. And so, mm -hmm. so, but welcome, welcome. You. And, you know, feel free to, you know, to call me at any time, you know, David and this team here um, are, are the ones who can probably answer your questions about the, the, the inner workings of this committee better than I, but um, they, they have been working hard and they have, um, really gelled, I think. <laughs> and so uh, I'm really proud, really proud. Mother Joyce, I have a question um, and maybe I should know this, but uh, some of, do, you, do we have a thought about when some of our pre-pandemic outreach things might be able to come back online? For example, we had a group that hosted um, open doors in the church on cold nights, which obviously we haven't been able to do for the pandemic. We also used to have um, lun lunches in the soup kitchen where we'd sometimes be able to, well, I mean, every, maybe one Sunday a month, uh, yeah. parishioners would go and have lunch with the folks um, coming to have, share a meal. Um, yeah. I don't I'm, know if I'm those not sure will ever the soup kitchen to is what is going to open, as you know, they're they're kind of a, you know they're connected to us, but very loosely now because of their 5013C status. And so um, while they started out as a ministry of the church, they're no longer listed explicitly as a ministry of the church because it jeopardizes their 5013C status. Um, <clears throat> and so. Uh, uh, I don't know. I can talk to Tamara about, and, and part of that may be uh, direction that we give them from the diocese. And so um, I'll check with her next week and, and just kind of find out whether or not she has any, any, any thoughts on when they plan on resuming um, in-person dining for, for the, soup tape, the uh, shepherd's table guests. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question right now, but I, I can ask her uh, next week and get back to you. And if I if I'm making a note, if I forget, jog on my memory. You know, I won't be offended at all. Relative to, uh, and in fact, we we had a, a meeting with the bishop among about other things today, and this actually not specifically shepherd's table, but, but more generally, when can we resume using our kitchen and, or when can we resume feeding folk even in um, shepherd's hall? And we, we're gonna have to have more discussion on that. I actually don't think it's so far away anymore. But uh, I think it will all depend on, on the pandemic rates, whether or not there's a new variant that comes down. You know, the hope is that I think probably in 
<clears throat> early 2022. I, this is my best guess, is considering the rates continue to go down and stabilize, um, I, my hope is that sometime first quarter 2022, those restrictions may be relaxed. I'll take that prediction. Yeah. So just just don't have a, a you know a definitive answer on those things yet. But I get the impression that if things continue to trend the way they are, it will it will happen sooner rather than later. Terrific. That would be that would be great. I think it's hard to must be hard to join a church when you can't really gather with your new yeah. parishioners and start to know who's who. And um, so we hope you'll stick around and hopefully we'll start to have some of those events soon. Yeah, um, I think it's gonna happen. And <clears throat> um, this this may be a signal to, for us to start getting prepared by, um, by revitalizing or, or having our regathering team start meeting again as we're moving, uh, as we pray that we will move from this stage that we're in into, into a stage where the, the, the protocols that we have will be more relaxed. And quite honestly, the, the diocese is being much less directive now than when they were, than they were two years ago or 18 months ago, much less directive and more, um, from, and, and more um, giving direction more from the perspective of strongly recommend um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and then uh, it's up to your own discretion. And so um, I, they're moving more and more in that direction. And I think I don't see a reversal of that. So I don't, I don't think we have, I think we don't have any more official business, but I'd be happy to hear again, more questions or if there are things, you know, as a newcomer to CGS that we can, you know, answer for you since you happen to be on a call with us and it's not easy to get in a room with a bunch of parishioners right at the moment, or if there are outreach things that you would like to see happening or, 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 you know, really anything. So I'll, I'll just open us up for a few more minutes of conversation and then we can. Uh... Maggie, you stole my thunder. Oh, I did? I'm I was sorry. gonna I was gonna exactly <laughs> what I was thinking for uh, Vanessa and Judy um, from their former church or parish. Um, what were they doing that you don't see happening here? Which I think is a good question. Um, that may give us an opportunity to say, Maybe that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say at St. Mark's, the thing that I miss is we had a great big basket by the entry into the sanctuary and people would bring canned goods and cereals and all that. And then I think it went to, is it the food pantry that Christ Church has? And then there were volunteers that took it after church every day, but um, that's, I mean, they were there in one way. They went in there around the same time Good Shepherd joined it. Okay. But, yeah, and there's, uh, a, there's also the Central Food Bank, um, which is a, a, a large operation that needs all kinds of donations as well, that distributes all across, I believe, Central and Eastern North Carolina. Um, and they have like a huge warehouse that they um, do take um, donations for. So I know people that have gone, you know, for community service to actually take those pallets of everything they have and then put them into various categories to distribute to folks. So, there's, there's all kinds of those kind of places. So that's a, that's a really good idea, um, in those collection of uh, canned goods and other, other means. I know we also donate that kind of uh, food also to the, the soup kitchen as well, because they're always on a budget and always need uh, donations to survive as well um, downstairs. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of options there, I think. Yeah. 
And I think one other thing that we're, I don't know, David, I don't think it's reached your ears yet, but um, I have been in conversation with someone about um, assistance that, oh, that in, in time, we may be asked to give to the Afghan refugees that will be resettling in this area. Mm -hmm. And so um, the latest conversation, which admittedly was several weeks ago that I had was, um, uh, was that um, they haven't really arrived in this area yet. And there, there are all of these questions, you know, there are these different groups of refugees, those that have visas, um, those that are waiting to get official. Um, and, uh, and, and so I have been told that, um, that we will be notified. And so, um, and right now the, the thing that they need most is money. There will come a time when they may need, you know, when they actually get here that they'll need housing and furniture and clothing and, and all of that. So, you know, it, whenever that happens, we may, you know, it, we, we may run a clothing drive or a food drive or a furniture drive or a whatever. Um, and admittedly, I haven't, uh, I will touch base with them again in the next week or so, just to see. And I believe as a person, Judy, to put me in touch with, I think. What? Sarah, Sarah Stoller? Yeah. Yeah. Or was it Carolyn? I forget. I forget. Now, I Sarah was involved. Um... Years ago, I can't even remember how many, probably 30 years, we did a Vietnamese family. Mm -hmm. And then Sarah was very involved. We brought, um, Bos helped a Bosnian family. Mm -hmm. And the boy, even after he got old enough, he went to college here. So he stayed with you and Sarah. Mm -hmm. But it takes a lot of work to do right. the apartments and then supply their transportation and all that stuff mm -hmm. as they're getting used to a country where most of them don't even speak the language. Right, and as you know, we, we have a housing shortage in this area. And so it's, um, it, it may be even more difficult to, to find mm -hmm. housing for them. Um, Sarah's working with another organization in the Oakwood part of Raleigh. Um, and so we, we've just committed to stay in touch. And as soon as it looks like they're going to be asking for, for assistance, I'll let you know. Or if you have contacts, you know, we can, you know, bring them to the group as well. <clears throat> I think that would be a terrific direction for our outreach to go. Just thinking about really reaching out past our past our doors and, and welcoming folks from far, far, far afield. Mm -hmm. Vanessa, you had unmuted there for a second. Oh, I was gonna share, I'm also new to the Episcopalian church, <laughs> which is like a whole other layer. It, like, this is what I spoke to you about probably is like, I'm leaving my former church and like exploring a new church altogether. Uh -huh. So this is like a lot of journeys happening at once okay. um, for me. So yes. Yes, I remember the conversation now, Vanessa. Yes. And I've so, yes, okay. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, um, you may have, um, uh, you know, if there are other things other than, than, than our faith in action kind of, 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 of stuff that we're doing. If there are other things that you want to talk about or that um, that appeal to you or that you, you just need to know more about, feel free to write, reach out uh, to, to, to me or to whoever, uh, David or Rob or Maggie or, um, or Carolyn and Judy. Judy's relatively new herself. 
but you know if we can you know if any of us can help you um become more familiar with with this faith tradition we're more than happy to do that and um uh and so just just feel free to contact any of us and i'm going to put my email in the chat as well whoops uh Mother Joyce, wasn't there something in the parish news about having a Episcopalian 101 or something in the there fall? There is, and we're going to run it uh, probably right around the time that we are. We're going to run it. It's when we run it will be determined by when the bishop is going to visit, so that those people who take it will also have everything that they need to be confirmed. And so, uh, yeah, we, we, we're going to be offering that probably late first quarter, early second quarter of making an, an assumption that the bishop is going to come May-ish, June-ish timeframe. I think okay. last year he came, or Bishop Ann came, Bishop Ann came on Pentecost. Sunday. But Vanessa could still take it even if she decides not to be confirmed. She could That's learn correct. about the Episcopal In Church. fact, you know, the, the, it, it is my hope that we'll have more people take it than those people who are hoping to be confirmed. You know, it is, it is my plan right now that if no one else volunteers, I'll run the adult class. And Jeff Whitaker typically runs the class for the youth. Um, and so, uh, it is, uh, I, I, last year we called it explaining your faith, explaining our faith, you know, with the hope that instead of calling a confirmation, that it would actually be more attractive to call it something like explaining our faith or Episcopalian 101, um, so that uh, it would attract more people, but we really only had those people who wanted to get confirmed, but it will be open to anybody anybody who who wants to know more the other thing that we're planning to do um i doubt that it will start in the fourth quarter um but certainly in the first quarter of um of 2022 is that we will be having uh i haven't mentioned this to Imogen yet but i will <laughs> i will um i'll get around to that although she's seen the document um, is to have uh, maybe once a month during the Christian formation hour at nine o'clock um, an open forum for maybe 45 minutes where people can ask anything. You know, there'll be a, a, a clergy person available, maybe one of the wardens uh, or a person from the vestry and they can, they can ask anything. They can ask about something about the liturgy. They can, you know, um, it will be a ask the clergy or ask the leadership kind of kind of session. And so that was asked for in our in our adult formation team session um, in, uh, last time we met. And so I, I don't see any reason why we can't make that available early on. So again, you know, if there's any question about anything uh, relative to um, to Good Shepherd or the Episcopal faith tradition or the sacraments or the liturgy or music or what have you. Um, music, we'd have to have Dwayne there or somebody from the choir because um, I, I am not helpful at all. Imogen maybe could feel that session. It, it would be useless pretty much to have me there to talk about. So uh, I can talk about what I like, but, um, uh, and so, uh, you know, that that is, and so the other thing is that if you've got ideas relative to not just, um, not just faith in action, but also adult formation, and some of those things may even intersect with each other. There might be a faith in action thing an outreach thing that, that this team thinks of that has adult formation implications and that we need to have a formational hour on. And we can make that happen. 
Um, I was going to jump in and just say that I too am a fairly new Episcopalian. I think I was received into the church in 2008, nine. Okay. Uh, and I just uh, found this handbook that I put in the chat, super helpful. Um, yeah. Just like the primer. I don't know if Mother Joyce, you've ever seen it, but for me, it was. I, I have it in my office. Yes, and I was also yeah. going to commend to, to Vanessa and to Judy, if you haven't seen it yet, our wonderful library, which has all sorts of books, not just obviously not just on religious topics, but usually just a really good selection of um, items, but also things about faith that might be useful right. in your journey, I think. I'm a big, I'm a big user of the library. In fact, I have something overdue right now sitting down. <laughs> right. And, and I'm glad Maggie brought that up. You know, the, the library is, are you talking about our library? Or are you talking about the public library? Our, our library is, it's a wonderful resource. I think it's probably underutilized, but um, it's a, it's a wonderful resource. And there, there are folks who are committed to that ministry. And so, um, and, to, and to ordering the latest books and to doing a kind of book of the month, books of the month kind of thing. And I mean, they're, they're really very committed. And so it's yep. a wonderful resource and I use it quite often as well. And, um, and so, yeah. Uh, uh, the other thing I would mention is that, you know, I, I would assume Vanessa, maybe even Judy, um, if you haven't had the opportunity to tour uh, the Parish Life Center, know where everything is, uh, maybe myself or someone could take you on a tour or lead you through what is available on each floor and give you sort of that perspective that you don't get on a Sunday morning. And that, that way you'll be familiar with where classrooms are, where you know, the Raleigh Boy Choir is, is housed where we have the library. We have a wonderful small chapel uh, on the third floor that's just, you know, dyna dynamic for that space. So there's all these things that are hidden away that you might not know, which are great spaces. So I think that would also be a way to get you involved in thinking about what's there and um, visually experiencing uh, that, that, that parish life center. Right. Yes, we are. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother Joyce, were you going to say something else? No, I, I'm not going to say anything. That's that's great. And um, Vanessa, if you want to stop by at any time, I got tons of books on on the Episcopal faith and, and I'm tons. And so in addition to the library, they probably have everything that I have, but I, I have some that if you if you want to take them and own them, I'm, I'm more than willing to to let you have some of them. Thank you. Everyone's been so welcoming. It's been very wonderful. So thank you okay. all. Thank you. Good, 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 good. Well, we're so excited to have you and, and ready to be a resource. So uh, we are right at time. Perfect. And um, please follow up with us by email. Keep up with things on the parish newsletter. If there's something you don't see, uh, feel free to just email. David or me, um, happy to try to help you go in the right direction. I know it can be a little bit hard to access all the church information or Mother Joyce just dropped her email in as well. So um, thank you all so, so much for making the time for this. Um, it was exciting to get to talk a little bit about outreach and uh, if, if, we have, uh, if we have nothing else, we can end for the evening. Well, it is being recorded, so if someone missed it and it's not here, there's an opportunity to find out more later on. Absolutely, yes. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Thank Take you. Care. Take care. Bye -bye.